Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that really supports your health and wellness. This week we're gonna talk about your kitchen. I think that the kitchen is one of the most important spaces in the home because not only do we spend a lot of time there, but it's also a place where we are eating. And so ingesting toxins is a very real thing in a house that has toxins on surfaces um, and toxins in the air. So I'm gonna bring you through some slides that really break down this week's blog post. We're gonna talk about the items you definitely wanna keep out of your kitchen. We're gonna talk about how to detox your own kitchen in terms of materials and items that are in your kitchen. And then we're gonna talk about the healthy swaps you can make and I'm sharing so many of my resources that really bring the kitchen into the center focus of reducing toxins. So as I said, this video coming up is really a breakdown of this week's blog post. If you like to look at the uh, links that I am providing or you like to read the blog post and really go through it with a fine tooth comb, then I would encourage you to head to this week's blog post, which I have linked at the bottom of the video description. Otherwise, stick with me and we're gonna get started on creating a healthier kitchen. So whole food choices and healthy eating options are popping up everywhere, making it easier than ever to make positive lifestyle choices when it comes to food. We have access to healthy, natural, and fresh foods more than ever before, and most health-conscious families are taking full advantage of that in their healthy kitchens. The shift is bringing us back to natural and away from modified chemical-laden options that recently graced our past. Home improvement options are beginning to swing in that same way as we see people ditch harsh chemicals and unnatural synthetic products for natural and safe options. Because let's face it, what good is healthy eating if the products we're cooking in and on are adding chemicals and toxins to our food? In order to have a truly healthy lifestyle, we must look at what goes into our body, food, what goes on our body, products and clothes, and what surrounds our body, our home environment. The same idea of whole and natural food choices also applies to the environment of our kitchens, where we cook and eat. The most natural and pure the more natural and pure the products in our kitchen are, the healthier we will be overall. And the same increasing options in natural food is beginning to make its way into the products we use to build, maintain, and clean our homes. The options are increasing, and there's never been a better time to start changing your home environment to be healthier and toxin-free. As with any space in our home, it's important to know the items you should avoid at all costs. It can make it easier to pick and choose just how you're going to replace items and change habits. These items are the places I start with my clients as we detox their space. As you, the more you can remove from your home, the better and healthier the space will be. Creating a healthy kitchen should often start with removing these toxins. Candles and synthetic air fresheners, while they smell amazing, are best left out of our homes. Candles can produce CO2 as well as introduce unwanted toxins from synthetic fragrance into our air. Air fresheners also add synthetic fragrance toxins to the air in our homes. Unfortunately, we have no idea what toxins we're even being exposed to with these fragrances as there are often zero disclosures. What we do know is that many fragrance toxins fall under the endocrine disruptor category, which one, which is one to avoid at all costs. Endocrine disruptors not only cause immediate problems with our thyroid and reproductive endocrine disruptors not only cause immediate problems with our thyroid and reproduction. Long term, they can also increase the risk of certain types of cancers. Instead, try opening windows and using organic essential oils with a ceramic diffuser to add fragrance to your home. Avoid nonstick. This has been such a bummer, but really, there is no healthy nonstick pan out there. For a while, there were a few options that seemed good, 
But as they've studied the nonstick material more, we've found out that it's just not as healthy as stainless steel or ceramic. Nonstick pans contain toxins in the outer layer that expose us to PFOAs. Anytime these pans get scratched or get to a heat that is just too high, they will emit even more of these toxins. There are also toxins in the adhesives used to stick the non-stick coating to the pan. Instead, use pots and pans made from cast iron, stainless steel, or 100% ceramic. I have linked for you in the blog post more options that you can look at. The pots and pans that we cook in shouldn't be able to leach any toxins into our food that we ingest. Ingesting toxins is one of the worst ways to come in contact with toxins, especially for children. Plastic food storage is one of the things that I'm slowly trying to get out of my home for good. It can be tedious trying to remove it all, but I think that the kitchen is one of the most critical places to start when removing plastic. Food that is warm or acidic can leach even more toxins from plastics than the alternative. Plastic toxins such as styrene, which we talked about last week, or BPA, are present in plastics. And again, it's affecting the food that we'll be ingesting, which can be particularly harmful in terms of toxin exposure. Plastic food storage could range from plastic snack bags to plastic food storage containers, but slowly swapping these out for materials like silicone, glass, and stainless steel will transform your kitchen in the long run. In this week's post, I am also linking you to my toxin-free materials kitchen list, and it'll give you ideas on how you can replace plastics and what a cost-effective option is. Finally, toxic cleaners and detergents. Cleaning products are so tricky sometimes and Really, all we want is a clean and disinfected kitchen, especially when it comes to working with food. I myself have tried a gamut of cleaners in my house, and I know the tiring process of trying to find one that you actually like, is easy to find, and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. But the importance in finding a toxin-free cleaner is essential to the health of your home. A healthy kitchen contains plant-based cleaners that don't introduce fragrance toxins or other disinfecting toxins to your space. Overspray from these cleaners can end up in the air on, and on your food, causing you to inhale and ingest the toxic formula. This week, I am also sharing a link to Aspen Clean for their multi-purpose cleaner that I use in my own kitchen. It gets a green light from Environmental Working Group, and I have fallen in love with it after using it for several months. Don't forget about stainless steel cleaners and stovetop cleaners that you have at home too. I like to use Bone on Me, which is an excellent multi-purpose cleaner for your sink and stainless steel and is also EWG certi certified. So I'm all about creating a plan when you're looking to create a healthier space and a healthier kitchen is absolutely no exception. I think that planning out what you're going to change and how you're going to change it is the best practice to stick with these changes. I use a simple document or notepad on my phone and I make a short list of the things I'm going to be adjusting or changing. So for example, if I were to decide that plastic was one area I wanted to tackle, I'd make a list of each category for plastic. It might look like water bottles, kids cups, snack bags, and lunch containers. From there, I would pick one of those categories and clear out all the plastic I could. If I needed to replace items with healthy materials, I would make another small step and do that first. And then I work on tackling one small section either each week or every couple weeks depending on the budget for replacing and the amount of free time that I have each week. Sometimes if I need to purchase new items, I'll have to just do my research so that I have it in mind when I want to buy it. So when I see a discount or a good deal, I can purchase it without having to do the research at that time. So no matter how you do it, I think the best way to create a healthy kitchen is by just changing out small groups of things at a time and then removing the toxic products they're replacing. Slow and steady definitely wins the race here. 
So daily and lifestyle habits can either improve or hinder our indoor environment. And they can be one of the simplest things that we can change about our indoor environment. The kitchen in most homes is the central hub and where everyone gathers at the beginning and end of each day. Not only are we cooking our food in this room, but we spend a lot of time in this indoor environment. This is why creating a healthy kitchen space is a great place to start. Have you ever noticed how much moisture is around your stove after boiling a pot of water? Many people are surprised at just how much water vapor is produced from this simple task, but it's a fact that just by boiling a pot of water for 10 to 15 minutes increases the humidity level within your home by 25%. You may be wondering what this has to do with the health of your kitchen, but the kitchen that has high humidity levels is also a kitchen that is a breeding ground for dust mites and mold and mildew. Mold can be especially problematic in kitchens where perishable food is on countertops or in cabinets. Many of us miss cleaning our sinks on a regular basis. Sinks are a place where bacteria can be harbored and spread as food particles are left from the dishes. The drain in a kitchen sink can be even more unhealthy as usually it's a warmer area, it's dark, and it's wet from water. This is a recipe for mold, mildew, and bacteria. The good news is a simple solution of baking soda and vinegar and sometimes a drop or two of an essential oil like lemon for a fresh scent will help keep keep drains clean without adding chemicals to the air. And as I mentioned before, high humidity is one of the worst offenders of an unhealthy house. There are many reasons high humidity is to be avoided at all costs. First, humidity is a breeding ground for bacteria and mold, but humid environments also encourage toxins to off-gas at a faster rate as opposed to drier environments. This means the toxins present in your flooring, paint, walls, and furniture. Formaldehyde and flame retardants have been known to off-gas at a higher rate in warm and humid environments. And by keep so by keeping windows open and vented fans on while cooking, you can prevent the indoor humidity from skyrocketing around dinner time. So when is the last time you replaced your dish towel or rags? If you can't remember, you're not alone. This is another area for bacteria to grow, but it is also a spot that chemicals from cleaning products can manifest. Once bacteria or chemical toxins are on a rag, it can easily be spread around your countertop surfaces and tables. Replacing the towels and rags even once a day is a great habit to start. Make sure you wash them in hot water with a chemical-free detergent. And most of us don't think too much about cleaning our fridge. In fact, most of us just use it for food storage and pay little attention to the remnants left behind by spills, improperly stored food, and produce. So while a refrigerated space can deter the growth of mold and bacteria, it isn't completely eliminating it. So it's important to do a routine cleaning with a disinfecting cleaner to remove spills, bacteria, and germs from the shelves in the fridge. In the blog post this week, I am sharing with you some of my best resources to help overhaul your kitchen. So first we have Healthy Kitchen Essentials. This is a master list of everything you may need in your healthy kitchen from dishes to appliances. I researched all the healthiest options and put them in one master list for you. You can even print out the checklist version to keep at home as you slowly swap out your kitchen items. I also have the Healthy Kitchen Detox. Now, this is not a free product. Um, It's very robust and walks you through everything. I think it's $12. Um, So if you're ready to ditch toxins in your kitchen and start creating a healthy space, this is what you want. Um, The Kitchen Detox covers the habits and items you need to adjust and how to do it by in an organized way so that you can avoid the overwhelming feeling of change. I know that it can be confusing and challenging to know just what to do next, and this detox plan will walk you through everything. And then last, I have the kitchen remodel. So when you're ready to update your kitchen, there's a lot of planning that goes into the process. Creating a healthy kitchen can sometimes be about the building materials you're choosing. So I created this non-toxic kitchen guide to help you choose things like countertops, cabinets, and plumbing fixtures that are low toxin and healthy for your space. 
So no matter where you start in your kitchen detox or what changes you make, just know that you're headed in the right direction. Any small change you make, especially in the kitchen where we eat and ingest food is such a positive step. The more you get used to your new habits or changes, the more changes you can continue to make. Just build on each habit like a layer, and before you know it, you'll have a healthier home that supports your health and wellness. So this should give you a great starting point to help you create a healthier kitchen in your own home. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and going through all of this information. If you have any questions at all, you can send me a message, you can leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll be back next week with another healthy house tip on creating an indoor space that really supports your health and wellness.